welcome to the Divided State of America, episode three. I'm Heather Gardner. So we're almost at the end of February. I mean, not that time matters anymore, but as the days fall off the calendar, we're inching closer and closer to a time-honored tradition all Americans loathe, tax day. You better mark it. Congress is letting people starve, so you think they're gonna give us an extension this year? I know, I know, we all hate taxes, but our potential tax problems pale in comparison to those of a certain Florida man. Supreme Court clearing the way now for investigations to finally get their hands on the former president's tax return. <laughs> that has got to sting. Trump stacked the court, held a super spreader party to celebrate the occasion, likely caught COVID at that event, but when he needed the court to help him steal the election and protect him from prosecutors, SCOTUS basically told him to go kick rocks. Karma is such a nasty little bitch, isn't she? That's why I got popcorn. Oh, and it gets worse for Donnie. Manhattan DA Cy Vance just enlisted the services of a legendary prosecutor who helped take down the Gambino crime family. Not the kind of move you make if you aren't bringing serious charges. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Seems a little salt. And listen, it's not just the Donald who's in hot water either. Daddy's little girl could also be in some deep shit. She got a lot of money for consulting payments. Um, we don't know the totality of it. We were able to specifically identify some of it. The question there is she was an executive at the company, so why is she getting consulting payments? This just keeps getting better, and I'm not normally one who takes pleasure in this kind of stuff, but fuck these people. They played the system, played our nation, and made out with hundreds of millions of dollars to hell with it. Law and Order, The Trump Atonement is my new favorite TV show. It's got it all. Mob family, court drama, the son you know who's gonna squeal and take them all down, and a healthy dose of comical relief. Because Trump, stripped of his most precious commodity, Twitter, has resorted to full page rage statements that I assume are delivered to newsrooms via carrier pigeon. The top of it just reads like a Twitter rant. This is something which has never happened to a president before. It is all Democrat inspired. An election which many people and experts feel that I won. Just a fact check there, that's not true. In the meantime, murders and violent crime are up in New York City by record numbers. We will win. Where to start? In my mind, White House Barbie is sitting in a poorly lit room, furiously typing as Trump, the only person who'd hire her, shouts incoherently about stolen elections. <sighs> Anyway, the real fireworks haven't even started yet. The DA's office just barely got their hands on this treasure trove of documents, and Trump is losing his shit. So keep that popcorn ready. I got a pretty strong feeling that... The best is yet to come! And now for a story where the worst is likely yet to come. I wouldn't wish this on anyone, but... Have you tuned into Fox News lately? Now that Trump's just another grandpa who can't figure out Zoom, Fox has had to change their approach. You know, considering they can't just ball wash the president all day to fill airtime. So they've pivoted back to doing what they did in the pre-Trump era. Nonstop, bad faith attacks on Democrats, Joe Biden, the libs, AOC, people in California. I mean, really anything to keep their viewers scared, angry, and most importantly, tuned in. And don't get me wrong. Politicians deserve criticism and scrutiny. We need to hold them accountable. But the level of hypocrisy from Fox is beyond parody. Fox is hammering Democrats over trivial things after making excuses for Trump's crimes for years. For example, it's a bit fucking rich seeing Fox News piss and moan about Hunter Biden, a private citizen, by the way, moving into a $5 million house in LA. But not a peep when these two made over half a billion dollars while working in the White House. Or how about Sean Hannity ripping Joe Biden for failing to fix the economy Trump's incompetence destroyed after only three weeks on the job? We are nearing the end of Joe Biden's first three weeks in office. Only 6,000 private sector jobs were created. Even fake news CNN had to admit that it is a grim sign for a recovery. He's the president, not a goddamn miracle worker. That was supposed to be your guy. And Fox has wasted no time going right back to some of their greatest hits. Hell, some of these things are so predictable, you could set your clock to it. Oh, yeah, right on schedule. Thousands of migrants marching from Central America with their eyes set on the United States. Migrant caravans. 
an election year classic. But the disinformation and the manufactured outrage on their airwaves is only half the equation. It isn't just what they show their audience, it's what they omit entirely. When presenting their case to the Senate, House impeachment managers showed horrifying new videos and presented a coherent timeline for the events of the Capitol riot. A historic event, kind of a big fucking deal, and every other network was tuned in. Whereas Fox was focusing on more pressing issues? Another huge controversy over the national anthem. And Fox did the same shit on Tuesday during the Senate hearing on the insurrection. The other networks were carrying it live. And once again, Fox is still litigating the damn anthem for the millionth time. Although, to be fair, it is Sean Hannity's favorite baby-making music. Ugh, gross. Anyway, all of this has always been within the normal operating procedures for Fox News and the grievance machine. But there's been a recent development that's pushing Fox in an even more dangerous direction. Competition. Fox has dominated right-wing TV for 20 years. But that, that situation, that monopoly control, is starting to break apart. So what you have going on is this right-wing audience that's ticked off at Fox News for not being pro-Trump enough. Okay, not gonna lie. This has kind of put me in a difficult spot. Fox News tanking in the ratings should make me happy, right? But their competition is a whole different level of loony, and it's forcing Fox to jump aboard the crazy train. They've basically given up any news credibility, even once respected journalist Maria Bartiromo has joined the ranks of the conspiracy cranks like Tucker Carlson and Judge Janine Wino. Welcome back. It's good to be with you tonight, and uh, we apologize for the technical difficulties. One sec, I, I think I'm having some technical difficulties of my own. <laughs> Sorry about that. Just needed a drink after all this nonsense. Where was I? Oh, yeah. Fox is trying anything to woo back their Trump-loving audience. They've gone full-blown white supremacy in prime time, and they're trying to rewrite history. But you had to doctor the videos to create the impression, because in reality, this was a bunch of rowdy people walking through hallways. Now, fortunately, this is not going unnoticed by lawmakers, who are starting to hold hearings on disinformation and broadcast media about damn time, and Fox along with its ugly stepsisters, are facing multiple billion-dollar lawsuits. So will this finally get them to course correct? Oh, I mean, we can just really only hope. But until they face some type of consequences, don't expect the lies or bad faith attacks to disappear anytime soon, unlike Lou Dobbs. And I know I said this was all beyond parody, but I couldn't help myself. Pour a cocktail. We're about to blow your mind. Yeah, we're always telling lies. We know our viewers buy it. Blame Nancy for the riot, even though it isn't true. Oh, did people voting twice? They're gonna take your guns away and take away your right to pray. The libs are coming for you. When they come for you. Oh, and we'll blame the windmills for this disruption. Facts don't really matter anymore. Fossil fuels are far and more reliable. what it comes right down to is rank corruption. Manufacture outrage daily. Gotta fight the culture war. Cause it's all in bad faith. The LGBTQ, CIP. January 6th Capitol riot faith, was a faith, gift faith, to Democrats. You and your faith, ilk want to confiscate faith. guns. Maybe. I'll broadcast that vaccines are safe When our boss got one anyway Can't you see it's all a ruse? Pay me And there is nothing I won't say Make all your scandals go away We'll even help you blame your kids For your trip to Cancun But this is why our country's fucking broken Constant lies that no one answers for Oh, and we'll blame the libs for Texas being frozen. Someone really ought to stop me before we start a civil war. Cause it's all in bad faith. It's all in bad faith. Cause it's all in bad faith, the faith, the faith. It's all in bad faith, the faith, the faith. Where's my latte? I apologize, that's just gonna be stuck in your head the rest of the day. Okay. Raise your hand if you've ever heard the following arguments regarding American politics. I had to vote for the lesser of the two evils, or 
both sides are bad, or all politicians are corrupt. Honey, if I had a dollar for every time I've heard those lines, I could take a trip to Cancun. Business class. And listen, I get why many people think that way. So much of the political discourse is just a nonstop cycle of, what crisis over here? Look at that over there. Or what about ism? So instead, it's much easier to just write everything off as equally bad, right? You can just cast your vote and wash your hands clean of the process. It's all the same. Wrong. The both sides argument is nothing more than a crutch used to conveniently avoid any examination of one's own beliefs or the parties in question. I know <laughs> Exhibit A. We hit 500,000 COVID deaths in the United States this week. A staggering milestone. Here's what Joe Biden had to say. The people we lost were extraordinary. They spanned generations. Born in America, immigrated to America. But just like that, so many of them took their final breath alone. And Exhibit B, the reaction to the huge number of COVID deaths from the other side. A thousand Americans are dying a day. They are dying, that's true. And you ha it is what it is. One of these things is not like the other. Or how about when historic wildfires scorched California, we got this from the tweeter in chief. The president lashed out at California Governor Gavin Newsom and threatened to pull federal funding. Trump had to be pressured into releasing those funds. He's always just so happy to help states that didn't vote for him. But when a once in a generation deep freeze hit Texas last week, President Joe Biden announced he was having FEMA expedite Governor Greg Abbott's request for a major disaster declaration. But two evils, right? Let's stick with the disaster in Texas for a second. AOC, a constant target of the right, flew to Texas and raised several million dollars for relief there. Technically, Texas ain't her problem, but... When disaster strikes, this is not just an issue for Texans, this is an issue for our entire country. Yeah, last time I checked, we were all Americans. Meanwhile, Texas Senator Ted Cruz hopped the first flight to Mexico, leaving his constituents and his dog out in the cold. But when Superstorm Sandy hit New York a few years ago, Cruz was an emphatic no vote on that relief package. <laughs> no, I am tired of the both sides bullshit. Even on a policy level, the parties are not the same. Take the biggest legislative achievements from the past two presidencies, Obamacare and Trump's tax cuts. The Affordable Care Act expanded Medicaid across 37 states, provided a huge boost to rural hospitals, and cut the number of uninsured Americans by almost half. The provisions help Democrats and Republican voters alike, which is wonderful. We all deserve health care. And sure, we should be having reasonable debates on the best way to make it accessible and affordable, but only one side is concerned about actually helping people. Since passing in 2010, Republicans have constantly tried to sabotage or repeal Obamacare, which could leave millions with no insurance. And they don't even have a plan to replace it. Now, Trump's signature achievement, his tax cuts, take a guess who benefited from them the most. The Trump tax reform gave a permanent cut for high income earners and corporations to spur job creation. But many use those cuts for one time bonuses and stock buybacks. I'm so surprised. And hidden within that bill were tax hikes for everyday Americans, which go into effect this year. So tell me again, which party is fighting for you and which party is just fighting the other side? I'm serious here. Can you think of one GOP policy to improve your life that isn't rooted in fear? From guns to religion to health care to who gets to vote. Their argument is never, look how we can help you. It's look at what they're taking from you. Making a vote for them the lesser of the two evils, a much easier pill to swallow. No, they're not the same. And to pretend otherwise just means you're unwilling to confront what you support and the damage your complicity is causing. And truly, truly, I hate that we have two sides to begin with. I hate that naming our show The Divided State of America made perfect sense 
Catchy though, right? But still fucking sad. This is our one America. Or at least it should be. And that will do it for the divided state of America. We're just gonna keep calling it that until things change. <laughs> thank you for watching and hopefully we can just together make this world a little bit of a better place. And thank you to the Midas Media Network. We'll be right back here with another brand new episode next Thursday. So hit that subscribe button and see you then.